Camilla Tomini is an NBC Royal expert. Stig Abel is a former media advisor to Clarence Health. I want to say good morning to both of you. Good morning. Hi there. And, and Camilla, let me start with you. We've just seen Natalie's piece on these two very different sets of grandparents. You've got the royals and the commoners. Is that going to create a balance for this new baby, or is it going to create conflict? Well, that's the question on everyone's lips, Matt. Is this baby going to be more Cambridge or more Middleton? Clearly, Carol Middleton has got a very key role to play here. She doesn't face any competition in the absence of Princess Diana. And, of course, as the mother of the daughter of this child, who's going to take a very firm lead in its upbringing, Carol will be instrumental. We know that Prince Charles is a doting father. He perhaps didn't get the credit he deserved when William and Harry were being brought up. That went a lot to Diana. He's going to be there, but I think, really, Kate's going to be leaning increasingly on her parents. Equally, William gets on very well with Carol and Michael. He calls Michael dad. He'll want the child to be brought up in their bosom, too. So I think there will be a lot of trips to Bucklebury and not perhaps as many to Highgrove. You know, Stig, uh, Camilla makes it sound like all Woodstocky and everything. Everybody's going to get along. The fact is, when a grandchild is born, there's a natural tug of war between the grandparents' families. Can the Middletons compete with the Windsors? Well, I think they can. I think you can also overstate just what commoners uh, the Middletons are, are, are said to be. I mean, it's worth remembering that Kate went to a very, very uh, uh, posh public school in this country where she moved around with lots of uh, very we wealthy aristocratic people. So. I think you can overstate the difference between the two families, but I think there won't be necessarily so much a tug because Kate will have the ability, it's her child, I think, to go regularly home to see mum. And I think the palace will have learnt the lessons of the Diana experience and will we'll, we'll have to work around that. And, and Camilla, just last question for you. How long is the bedlam going to last over there in terms of the media crush surrounding this family, this young couple and their baby, are they going to be media? Is there going to be press out there on the one week anniversary of his birth, on the two week anniversary? When do they disperse? Well, how long's a piece of string, Matt? Look, there's still a great appetite for this story. We've got crowds of people outside Buckingham Palace still today. Long may that continue. They all want to have a look at the birth announcement. And look, let's hope we do get the baby's first steps and the baby's first days at school and all of these milestones that we're used to. I think the couple accept that while it's a very private, cherished moment for them, they understand that the world wants a piece of it. And I'm afraid that means that the press will be at least close, perhaps not on top of them for the first couple of weeks, but we'll be watching, as you well know. Maybe at arm's length, Camilla Tomini and Stig Abel. Thank you guys very much. I was going to give you an answer. 18. 18 years old. <laughs> I mean, that's when they'll be? Be, I don't know. So the little boy is an adult. Okay. <laughs>